What's up, vinyl community? How's it going? Matt here, back with a Vinyl Finds video. It's been a little while. Um, I haven't found much in the way of records this year. I think I've kept 15 or so records this year so far. But uh, I've got enough of a little pile here. <sighs> I'm out of breath. My wife called in the middle of me making a video. This is take two. She was home real quick. I had to run down and say hi to her and come back up. And I'm out of breath, so... Give me, give me a second. Mm. Okay. Anyway, whew, through the record store, we've bought a couple collections over the last month, and I've kept some records and some really good records, and I thought I would uh, kind of show these off. And then I had plans to do a video again in a couple of days, kind of promoting something for the record store, and I don't like to do that from my personal channel. I really don't. I try not to. I try to keep it separate. Uh, I know people ask about it and want to know stuff like this, but I just don't I don't want ever, anybody to ever think I'm You know trying to make money off of these videos and I haven't done a video in a long time And I'm making one and I'm like, oh by the way, here's a promotional thing. I, I'm not making this video with that intent. It was gonna be two videos We all know how I am. I procrastinate I wasn't gonna get the video the other video out in time to promote this thing. So I'm going to do this video in kind of two parts. It's one video, but I'm going to do Vinyl Finds first. So if you don't want to stick around for the promotional thing, you can just watch the Vinyl Finds and go your merry way. If you're interested in the promotional thing, stick with me till the end. Um, I'm not selling anything through this channel. It's nothing like that. It's just a promotional thing. Again, stick to the end if you're interested in it. If you're not, I, I get it. I get it. I don't monetize the channel. I don't try to... You get it. Um, also, this angle... I don't know about it. Like if I lean back, it looks like I'm like you know, welcome to the, welcome to the record room. Mm. <laughs> I don't I don't know. It just seems a little too sensual. But uh, it's this room is weird with the lighting. I've got a window right here, so it gets some good light on my face, but it's not bright enough out to get it all the way back. So it's a little bit darker back there. I don't have a lot of good lights in here. So I don't know if I like the best spot. And here we are. But anyway, you don't care about that. We're here for the vinyl finds. So, everything I'm showing came from the record store. The first one came from our clerk, Josh. He works for us, and uh, he traded in a bunch of stuff because he wanted to kind of pick up some cooler stuff that had come in. One of the things that he traded in was this. Weezer's Pinkerton, the MoFi recording. I know, I know, there's controversy over MoFi right now. I'm not wading into that nonsense. I don't, I don't care. Uh, frankly, I don't collect their stuff. I don't seek it out, so it really, it, it has no relevance to me at all. <laughs> so I've, I've got this and Ryan Adams' Love is Hell box set. Those are the two MoFi things I have in my collection. If you've got an opinion on it, cool. I don't have one. So all I know is that this record sounds great. This is the only Weezer I have in my collection. I need to pick up more. I just haven't done it. Um, and I thought this would be at least a good place to start since it got traded in and I didn't have to pay anything out of my own pocket for it. So there you go. Uh, the next two are from a collection we bought from a lady in rural South Central Illinois um, out of a trailer. You know, you never know where you're going to find records and you got to go look everywhere. Um, you never know where the good stuff's going to come from. So she had a pretty good collection. I think it was her husband's. He had passed away and she didn't want to mess with the records being around anymore. It was just time to let him go. Uh, it was a really good, solid, classic rock collection. And there were two kind of surprising things in it. The first... An upgrade copy for me of the Beach Boys Pet Sounds. I had a mono copy, still it's on my shelf, uh, that I found at a thrift store. It's beat to crap. The cover is so so, like, I just probably gonna frame it and put it on the wall. Um, but this is like a VG copy, plays great. I have a stereo copy as well, it's also VG that plays great. But uh, I feel like in this one, mono and stereo, I kind of want to have both of those. So mono is the way to go, but I, I enjoy the stereo copy as well. And this is a, a cool one to have. There's the back there. It's getting pricey, man. It's getting hard to pick up clean copies of that. And I do have it in a uh, kind of a faux MoFi sleeve. It's the vinyl style uh, version of the MoFi sleeve there. So nice clean rainbow capital copy of that. The other one, my business partner actually went on the dig and called me and he said, hey, there's a copy of this record in here. I think I want to keep it. I was like, you've been after it for years. You went on the dig, you get dibs. And then we, he got back to the store and he was like, the cover's too rough. I just can't keep it. And so I said, well, I'll be taking that home then. It's Rodriguez, coming from reality. 
Uh, the record, I don't know what the heck happened here, if an animal chewed on it, if it got just bent up, if a baby, you know, grabbed it or something, but that corner is just destroyed. There's a sticker tear there. There's an antique booth sticker there. At one point, this person bought it for $1.50. There's a tear down here. It is the die cut. Uh, that's still intact. So it's a super rough cover. I don't care because the record is incredibly clean. Uh, I'll take it out here. Look how beautiful that is. You can see the gloss. There's a few hairlines, but you know, this, is, this is baby's VG plus. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Mm. And the record is so good. I know people prefer Cold Fact, but I, I think there's a lot of good on coming from reality. The opening track, Climb Up On My Music, is definitely the standout on here. The rest of the album gets in uh, more of a lighter style, you know, some ballads and things on there, but I love it all. I think it's beautiful. I think the arrangements are nice. I like Rodriguez's voice and his guitar playing. I think it's great, and I'm not going to pay 150 plus for a copy. Uh, I would love to get an upgrade to the cover someday, but that's probably never going to happen either. So for now, I can at least say I own a copy of it and a player copy, and I'm pleased as peaches with that. The next six albums, yes, the next six that I have here, I'm for sure keeping two of them. The other four, I'm on the fence about. I want to keep them, but they are they would be fast sellers for the store, so help me out. Maybe convince me to keep them, right? Or convince me to sell them, whatever you want to do. Um, but they came in last weekend. I was at home putting my daughter down for nap time, and Brian, my business partner, and Josh called me, and they were like, a collection just walked through the door. It's about 600 records. You need to come help us right now and bring as much money as you can. So I drained the uh, record store's bank account, which there was not much there. I pulled money out of my own bank account. Brian pulled money out of his, and we ended up getting this collection um, for a very, I, I thought a fair price. The people that we bought it from were very happy with it as well. The guy had collected his, you know, from teenage years on up. He was 62. They were moving, decided it was time to let him go. He didn't play him as much anymore. They would be too difficult to take with him in the move, so as part of their downsizing, they sold it, and he was very happy with it. He bought my business partner a beer uh, afterwards while I stayed and priced the records. I was invited along, but it was like, I'd rather stay here and uh, and go through the whole collection. So, you know, when they want to buy you a beer afterwards, you, you know, you, you paid them right, you know, you offered them a fair deal, and they felt good about it. So that always feels good, you know, as a record store owner to, uh, you can't pay face value for it, you know, you got to make money. And uh, my phone's ringing. It rang earlier. Uh, I don't know what's going on. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, what I was saying was as a record store owner, you can't pay face value because you have to make money. But if, if you can be happy with the deal and the other people are happy with the deal, then it's a win-win situation. Um, but anyway, all that to say, uh, the collection was full of a lot of punk stuff, a lot of new wave, um, tons of Brian Eno, um, like the Ambient series. Music for airports, music for films, um, lots of that stuff. And the, the one that I am for sure keeping is Television's Marquee Moon. My business partner and I and our clerk Josh, we all three wanted this record. Uh, but Josh found some stuff he wanted more that I didn't care about. Brian found some stuff he wanted more that I didn't care about. So kind of by default, uh, I got to keep Marquee Moon. I've been on the hunt for this since I started collecting, you know, 15 years ago. I think I may have seen one original copy in person before, and it was out of my price range, and it's only gone up in value since then, and I'm very, very happy to add this to the collection. This is uh, phenomenal. I, I have Adventure, uh, I think it's their second record, maybe their third, and it's great, but this is so much better. I think this is just phenomenal. Uh, the title track is great, Venus, um, ah, seminal, it's a seminal work. Very happy to add it to the collection. The other one that I am for sure keeping, I'm gonna wait till the end because it's just, it blew me away how good this was. But uh, the next one that I might keep, Hawkwind, Warrior on the Edge of Time. Um, I don't typically seek Hawkwind stuff out, but when I find it, I, I get it and love it. Um, and this thing is freaking great too, and it's super clean. Um, you know, in the store, we could probably get 30 bucks for it. Do I, do I put it in the store and get the money and recoup some of the money that we paid for the collection or do I keep it because it's here? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, Space Rock, fantastic stuff. Hawkwind's always good stuff. Um, next up, an original. B 
Beastie Boys License to Ill on Def Jam. Again, just freaking clean. This whole collection was very clean. In store, we'd have no problem getting 50 bucks for this. Would I personally pay 50 for it? No, I'm not a big Beastie Boys fan. Um, I like their music, but it's never been a favorite. And to be honest, this record, I think a lot of the songs sound very similar. Like you, if you started one and didn't play the words, I don't know if I could tell you the, t the title name. You know what I mean? But it is great. <laughs> so I don't know. And it's another classic seminal album. Brass Monkeys on here. Um, oh gosh. Um, the Brooklyn. What the heck is that called? Why am I drawing a blank? No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Jeez. Uh, go easy on me. <laughs> the comments. Um, Fight for Your Right, of course, is on. That's the big one. But I, I really like Girls. I think that's a fun track and it's a little bit different sound. Um, but yeah, look how clean that is too. It's just, I have played this twice since I brought it home last weekend and it's kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm like this close to keeping it, but again, 50 bucks for the store is 50 bucks for the store. So I don't know. I don't know. That's another one that I've been kind of on the fence about. The Buzzcocks. Another music in a different kitchen. This is a UK original. Man, that light is really bright coming through that window right now. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's all that black inner. But there's the label. There's the record. Again, very glossy, very clean. Sounds great. Plays great. And it is great. It's. I like this. I like this quite a bit. When it comes to punk, I'm not super into, like, the hardcore scene. I like it to have more of kind of a pop punk feel. Not pop punk necessarily, but at least some poppy sensibilities. And this definitely has that. Um, again, this is another one would be an easy 50 bucks or more in the store. Do I like it enough to keep it that? You know, would I pay that for it? I, I kind of looked online. And I was like, I think I could get like a VG VG copy from the UK with ship for like 35. I'd be on it for 35. But then it's VG VG. This is VG plus VG plus. It's a better copy. I don't know if I'd pop on it online. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I'd pay for, for it at that price point, but I'm also a cheap skate, you know? So I don't know. I don't know. It's that push and pull of like the business side of me is like, man, that'd be some good revenue for the store. But the collector side of me is like, when are you going to come across this again for free, you know, or cheap even in playable condition? I might have to take it home. I might have to keep it. I might not go back to the store. Another record in that vein. This one's really cool. Richard Hell and the Voidoids, Blank Generation. You know, Richard Hell was originally in television, um, left the group before they released any albums, but uh, it's got kind of a similar vibe on it to television. I like this quite a bit. It's on that Sire label. Again, just really clean. You don't you don't find punk records like this very often, and when you do, they're usually beat up. You know, people that played punk records usually didn't take care of their stuff. <laughs> you know, but this guy was a collector, and so he took good care of his of his records. This is in great shape. This one's not, uh, I don't know, as expensive. Maybe forty to forty-five, I think. But still, I don't know if I'd pay that for it if I saw it in person. Uh, but I have it in my hands right now, so do I keep it? Mm, it's and again, it's not the typical stuff that I normally seek out, right? It's not the '60s psych stuff. It is kind of the late '70s, early '80s punk kind of stuff, and I do like that. And I don't have a lot of it in the collection. This would be a good way to get quite a bit of it, and some big ones uh, right away. Right away. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of on the fence about keeping this one too. But ultimately, I don't know. It depends, I guess, a little bit on what my business partner Brian ends up keeping. Maybe try to match him dollar for dollar and. And go from there because the last one I'm keeping so I had that television marquee moon that's kind of a high dollar one this also is kind of a high dollar one but man we played it in the store when we were pricing the records and I was like what is this I want this right now this is the Saints I'm stranded they were from Australia kind of considered maybe the first punk band they were playing in Australia in the early 70s and already had this sort of sound that would be established, you know, by 77 when this record was released, when the Sex Pistols were putting their stuff out, the Ramones, that sort of sound. These guys were doing it arguably first. Um, I don't think I knew anything about this until the other day, so this is kind of new research for me, but the title track, I'm Stranded, 
oh my gosh, it's the opening song. It's amazing. I told the guys at the store, was like, it sounds like it came off the soundtrack to Freaks and Geeks. Um, and the rest of the record, I think it's nine songs total, have more of a lo-fi sound in them because they were demo tracks. Uh, the label wanted to put out an album, and they really only had the single kind of officially recorded and polished and mixed and all that, and they kind of rushed out the rest. So there's kind of a demo sound to it because they were demos. It's all fantastic, though. This record freaking rules. Um, Messing with the Kid, Erotic Neurotic is really good. Kissing Cousins is a great song. Demolition Girl, and then the uh, closing track, Nights in Venice. Is really, I, it's all fantastic. I, I'm serious. This record is incredible. Uh, it's on the Sire label. I don't know if I showed that yet or not, but this is like a $65, $70 record, and I'm keeping this one. I just am. I'm going to keep it because I loved it. I No joke, I've played this record, the record itself, three times since I've had it, and I've listened to it on Spotify on my way to and from work every single day this week. I just can't stop playing it. It's so, so good. So, there you go. There's some records that I've picked up recently. I would say from the rest of the year, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six or seven other records that I've kept. Um... It just hasn't been, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting a little pickier, I think, and I'm getting a little bit choosier on what I spend my money on. Um, and it's a lot easier when it's when you've got the record store, because you can kind of play records at the store and decide, like, oh, it's, it's okay. You know, if I saw it in person at a record store in the past, I would have bought it and brought it home and be like, it's okay, I'm keeping it. But at the record store, it's like, it's okay, I don't need to take it home, I don't need to keep it. So there's some of that that goes on, and then... Um, I've said this before, but the collection's kind of at the point where it's high dollar stuff now and, you know, 50 bucks and up on records that I still want and I'm trying to seek out. So when I find them, it's like I'm going to buy one record and that's going to be it for the month or whatever. So not buying a lot of quantity right now, but trying to focus more on quality. So that's where I'm at with the collection and some cool stuff coming through the doors. The record store, I mean, seriously... The last four weeks, we have spent every penny we've had on collections that have come through, and it's been some amazing stuff. And uh, that leads me into the promotional part. So if you're done with the vinyl finds and you don't want to listen to the promotional part, this is where you can part ways, and uh, I appreciate you watching. But uh, if you're familiar with this new app called Whatnot, I guess it's not new. Um, let me pull it up on my phone. Whatnot. If you can see that, that's that's kind of the app. It is a live streaming selling service. It's an auction type service. You can do buy it now, but most things do a live stream auction. Um, I joined as a person that was wanting to buy records. Um, my friend Rod, uh, who I know from Instagram and Facebook, kind of turned me on to it. He sent me a referral link, um, which I will link my referral link down below. Caveat, full disclosure, you're going to get 10 bucks free to spend on whatnot with my referral link, but if you spend the 10 bucks, I also get 10 bucks. I don't care to get the $10. I have bought one thing on the app. I'm more interested in selling for the store there. So it's just a way for you to get a free 10 bucks. And it works because Rod got me that referral link. I spent 10 bucks. It took it off my purchase total. It's automatic and it's, it's awesome. It's really cool. You get free 10 bucks. How often does that, does that happen? So if you use the link, that's the case. You get 10 bucks. If you spend it, I get 10 bucks back. But I may never spend it because I just want to sell stuff on there. So I have recently applied to be a seller. I got approved. I have to do a live stream next week in order to maintain my seller status. So Wednesday, I believe it's August 3rd. I should have this in front of me so I know. Yeah, August 3rd. Wednesday, August 3rd at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time will be the Gold Pan's first live stream on whatnot. We're going to sell about 50 records. It's going to be a range of things from Japanese pressings of some Bob Dylan records, some Japanese pressing jazz records, like guys like Miles Davis, Horace Silver, um, some kind of kind of rarish stuff. But we're also going to have some classic stuff, like we're going to throw on some Elton John and Billy Joel, and maybe some Fleetwood Mac stuff. You know, we're going to try to spread it out, keep things anywhere from 10 bucks upwards of 150 bucks in terms of value and it's an auction so we may throw up a record that's you know we think we're 75 bucks start the bidding at 20 maybe you get it at 30 you know or something and you get a deal um, we're just trying to move through some old stock some rare stuff that's been sitting around for a while so we can recoup some money uh that we've spent on these record collections recently so we can buy more records um so that's the deal that's it that is the promotion 
there's no pressure to buy anything. There's no pressure to hop on and watch the live stream. There's no pressure to hop on and bid on anything. I don't want anybody to feel pressured. But if you are so inclined, if you're interested, uh, follow the Gold Pan. It's Gold Pan Records. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll try to post tomorrow a picture of some of the stuff that we're going to be putting out at this auction on Wednesday uh, to give you an idea of what's on there. And then on the WhatNot app, once we get the live stream scheduled and set up, it will have a list of every record that we're going to sell uh, that evening. It's going to be 50 records. It's going to have condition uh, listed on there, um, you know, like sleeve first, record second. It's going to have the pressing year so you know exactly what you're buying um, or bidding on. And you'll get an idea of what we'll have coming up. And if you want to join in on the live stream on Wednesday, that would be awesome. If you don't want to, that's cool too. I don't blame you. Um, I know a bunch of people have started the live stream stuff. Riverbend Records, uh, that Concert Buddy. If you're not subscribed to Concert Buddy, by the way, my friend Chance, give him a, a sub. Um, he's a local guy. Riverbend Records is a local record store in Alton, Illinois. They do a Facebook Live sale, uh, I think once or twice a week. So, you know, I know about it. I don't participate in it, but I think it's cool that they're doing it, and I think it's a cool way for other people to get records. So the same thing here. I don't want anybody to feel pressured. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm using this channel solely to promote and make money. I don't make any money off the record store. I, zero dollars. We've been over for five years. I've not paid myself a dime. Every, every penny we get goes back into buying more records. That's how it works. So um, if you so if you want to join us, the WhatNot app, it's on your phones, Android, Apple, Whatever you use, you can also access it on a computer. If you don't have a smartphone, you can just Google WhatNot, sign up. It's super easy to use. Just search vinyl on there. You'll see all the live streams that are coming up. It's very easy to bid on things. Um, it's easy to pay, you know, set it up with a credit card or PayPal beforehand. That way during the auction, as soon as you hit bid, you win the bid, it pays and you get the, the record. Um, they also require sellers to ship within two business days. It's very fast shipping. They provide the shipping labels. Uh, they don't do media mail pricing yet. It's first class mail pricing, which is garbage. As a postal employee, I know that they're not paying what they should be paying to ship these records. And they need to be doing media mail so it keeps it cheaper. And you know, it's in the works, I think, but for right now, it's what it is. The shipping will be around $5, you know, for one record. And if you add more records, it stay, you know, it's like a buck more per record or something. Um, so we'll try to keep it affordable. And then if you sign up for the referral link and you get 10 bucks and you join our live stream, you get a free 10 bucks to spend on stuff. Maybe that'll help with the cost of shipping or something. And if you want to use it on a different live stream, cool. Again, don't feel pressured. I just I want to make that clear. But I do appreciate everybody watching, sticking with me. I showed 10 records and it took 25 minutes. So if you stuck with me this long, thank you guys. I appreciate you big time. And uh, hope to see you guys soon with some more killer finds and... I do have the top 10 of 2021 almost finished. <laughs> so uh, it's almost August. It'll be out here in about uh, a week or two. Fingers crossed anyway. So we'll see you guys. Thanks.